Today we're actually in the facilities and we're going to go through step by step how we even started this whole process, you know, what this really means for you, what this means for all of us and what water is really about. And to do that, we're going to talk about water. Why water? For me personally, I've always had this fascination with water. Like I even think in water. Some people, they get in the shower, they sing in the water. We all have a relationship with it, but what is it? Do we really know what water is? No. They're just discovering, again, another phase of water called the fourth phase. That's Ger uh, Gerald Pollock's work. And in that, he discovered an exclusion zone or a place that is actually in the water that energy can actually be generated. He just filed a patent on it. So this is basically saying that we know almost nothing about water and that it has so many surprises for us and so many mysteries, but there's a connection. We're just now getting to the level to where we start even scratching the surface of what water is capable of doing. And we're gonna review many of the technologies that we utilize to change water, but first I wanna talk about some of the research that's already been done on water and its connection to DNA. Now, it's already been discovered that water impacts our DNA. The kind of water that we actually have, the characteristics of that water are inherited by the DNA. So you can also see these two words, water and DNA, as actually being synonymous with one another as based on what we've discovered so far. And that actually one drop of water holds 440,000 panels of memory. And this is immense because you can store an entire library on a drop of water and we are now seeing those experimentations actually happening. So to me, water programming is actually the final frontier and I've been working with it, but it takes a lot of equipment to begin to change the state of water. So we decided, okay, we're gonna go and we're gonna create a device that actually allows people to replicate what we're doing in this laboratory and begin to experience this level of transformation that can happen with the water. And I guess the biggest question would be why? Why can water do that? And it's because water is an amazing carrier. And what a carrier is is something that, just like it says, it's bringing it to you. So you, you exist on a cellular level. You exist on an atomic level. So you need water that actually can get into your cells and elements that can get as small as atoms. And that's actually what we're developing. We put together a device that allows you to begin to program your water and then ingest that water and then allow there to be a mimicry in, uh, basically inside of the system where the system begins to recognize that, hey, this is what I was like when I used to be perfect. Now, let me slow things down a bit here because I did mention that I wanted to talk about some very complex things, but going really fast with complex things, sometimes it goes over people's head, but it's good that this is actually the second recording, so now you get a chance to think about this a little bit deeper. So you have this connection with water and DNA, and the conclusion that we can come to is that, hey, water is very magical, but we have to dig into it a little bit deeper and say to ourselves, you know, how can we use it? And that kind of brings you to like what we're doing right now in this laboratory. What are we doing with water? And what we're doing with water is we're taking water through every single phase, every single test that can be run. We're testing the PPM, we're testing the ORP, we're testing the conductivity levels, we're testing so many things, but we do those tests after we do something to water. Like if we use ultrasonic frequencies, if we use lights, if we use lasers, and this has been going on actually for quite a bit of time. And so what this means is, is that we actually have been discovering some fantastic things that water can do, especially when you utilize light and frequency. And then what we've come to the conclusion of is that basically it's limitless. Because there's a frequency, because there's a sound, there's a light, there's a program, there's an energetic potential associated with everything. If you have the ability to put that into water, now you have the ability to actually put that inside of your body. And one of the ways that we test the water is obviously we, we just basically use ultra pure water, which is completely torn down. There's nothing inside of it. And then we start building it up from there, building block after building block after building block, adding different minerals, because water in that state, when you take it into ultra pure levels, it's thirsty. That's the term we use. And this is a term that's given to when water it wants to bond to something. It wants to bond to those minerals that you often taste within water that make water taste so good or not so good. So when ultra pure water, it doesn't taste like anything. It actually tastes even, if anything, a little bit more medicine-y. It's not like, oh, this is the best glass of water that I've ever had. 
And because that water is thirsty, what we find is when we add certain elements, and this could range from gold to titanium, on a monatomic level, when we add it to that water, that water immediately goes in and it makes a bond. And then it's made a bond to an ultra pure element. And then when you put that in your system, because it's at a monatomic level and it's this water, then it actually gets in beyond the cellular wall, which is what monatomics are capable of doing. And this is all research that has not only been put forth here, but also all over the world you'll find lots of articles and things based on water and how this can actually be done. And you'll see some of that in the videos that we have, we'll be showing here in a moment. So just to get this very clear, what we do is we do different things with water. And one of those things is we deal with water and frequency, right? And to me, frequency is, is a big thing because everything is frequency. Everything is energy. So when you have the ability to utilize frequency, you can cause things like cavitation. That's when even the whole structure of water is bent inside out. We have things such as ultrasonics, OK? Ultrasonics is like what you're seeing right here on the screen. You're seeing where ultrasonics can actually begin to fluctuate the design and the shape of the water. And so you can imagine what this, what's actually going on here and, and how the water is changing and perfecting its structure. And then what we've done is, is that we've also been able to match up our frequencies and, and understand a lot about frequencies and how you get to a harmonic. And this is very similar to like a radio station that when you're playing a radio, you have to tune in to that station and then you, know, you get behind the decimal point. So the same thing happens with the frequency, like 99.7, right? So 0.7 is behind the decimal point. So the same thing happens with frequency. It's not just 528 hertz, it's more like 528.56 hertz. So that's calibrated based on the device that you're playing it from and the thing that you're playing it through. So what we've done with FiAqua is we've completely tuned the device to be resonant and harmonic. And so this is frequency. So this is what we do. And when we've recorded changes, like ORC changes, conductivity changes, we then isolate how did that change take place. And then when we deem that change beneficial, we then incorporate that into the mechanics of the device. So what we're actually giving everyone is a device that is capable of affecting water on every single level that water can be affected, which is light, frequency, Structuring or vibration, which of course is the oscillating, we have an uh, oscillator inside the machine. We even have a resonance magnetic ring, which actually keeps all the resonance of the device inside of the device. So this is the type of research that we've been doing. So the big thing is, is that you can basically form a variety of structures and configurations to water with frequencies. And because carriers are important, we utilize light, we utilize radio frequencies, we utilize many different components that actually can get that frequency to a person. So that's the first part. So we, we're frequency heavy. Anyone knows me knows I get into frequencies. The next level of this, though, which is just as vast, is actually crystals. And you would never even be able to construct a device like this if you didn't somehow incorporate crystals. And the reason is, is that when you study crystals, you find that there's this seven crystal system or seven uh, geometric system within crystals, which is uh, triclinic, monoclinic, orthohombic, hexagonal, tetragonal, cubic, and trigonal, right? So these crystal systems are basically the building blocks to the reality. And it's so important to get things around these objects. So what was discovered, what resonance is? I guess that that's something we need to answer right now. Resonance is when something is around something else, it tries to find a harmonic. Just like when you get with somebody or around someone, you try to maybe see what they like, crack a couple jokes and see if they like jokes and what kind of jokes, you know, see if they like a certain kind of food, talk to them. So you try to resonate with them. So water does the same thing. And so when we take our ultra pure water that's already restructured and we put it around things or inside of our bodies, it does that. It, it finds, it starts pushing the body to find a medium between where it's at and where this element or this substance is. And because these substances are charged, it's almost like the dominant frequency wins. The more perfected system wins. Just as you would naturally have an inclination to go to things that would be better for you or seem better for you, right? So because we are ourselves, the same way that our cells behave, we also behave. And what crystals do 
is crystals give that template. You know, this is ancient building blocks. They give that template that allows the machine to determine what exact resonance pattern do we want to send across that channel. And so we do that, again, by actually getting the geometric shapes from the crystals. And we have a way of embedding that geometric shape into certain elements. And then we surround the device with those elements in the chamber. And then when those elements are triggered, then it actually causes a mimicry. This is a word you would need to remember. It's just, OK, I'm going to mimic that. That's what begins to occur within that chamber. So that's how we use crystals. And obviously, your pineal gland is also a crystal. A lot of people don't know that. But there's many crystals that are always moving through the body. And there's a lot of connection resonance. There's calciums. There's different kind of silicas all through the body. So that's how we utilize the crystals. So the next thing is, is we dig deep, we dig deep into monatomics. And this is because I have, I'm very fond of monatomics. I've been studying them for quite some time just based on the, uh, let's say, miracles that they've caused. And obviously, monatomics are used in some of the most advanced medications, like for heart disease and heart problems, those kind of things. But because monatomics are patented, that you, so you won't really, because they're patented, you won't really find medical companies actually trying to sell just a monatomic. Not to mention, monatomics happen to, when getting in the body, if they're done properly, they have a way of actually correcting things and correcting issues without that needing to be redundant. So in alchemy, which is a, obviously a term for a study or a science that took place all the way up to, I guess, 1,000, 2,000 years ago, where learned men and women would attempt to transmute metals into their highest state, which is known as a transmutation. And through that process, you can actually get an element into a monatomic, which means one atom, through a synthesis. So basically, you're boiling off all the impurities and all the toxins. You're getting rid of all that. And then what you're left with is this monatomic. And because the particle is as small as a single atom, it allows it to actually go into areas of the body that other elements cannot reach. So for example, colloidals are also a particle of gold or silver or whatever kind of colloidal that you get. But the particle is so big, it actually doesn't get into the cellular walls. Now, it does get into different parts of the body, and it's still very, very beneficial. But it's not going to get into the cell. It's just not small enough. So that's what monatomics is really about, is getting particles that are small enough, but also perfected within themselves as far as the element. So in this case, if it's gold, or if this case is titanium, et cetera. And then actually be able to get it back into the cell to begin to cause a process to where the cell actually regenerates. Because the cell and the entire body is almost like a periodic table in itself. It needs these elements in the best state and quality that it can get it in order to restructure and rebuild itself. So this is why we feel like monatomics are important, and that's why we've incorporated them into what we're doing. And what we also have is with monatomics, you and not, don't want to miss anything here, you get not only the conductivity, because once you get this structure of perfected elements through the body, you get the conductivity. And it's actually vivid. You can really feel it. And then not only do you get the conductivity, you also get the capacity which is just like there's another part of the electronical devices they call the capacitor. And the capacitor is responsible for holding the energy. I mean, people are already familiar with when you get too much energy, in the, but you can't hold it, you know, you crash. So you need this c capacity level. And that's what monatomics help create is within your body to where you can hold energy for prolonged periods, which obviously starts leading to less sleep, you know, more energy, you know, being able to drive harder, faster, stronger, et cetera. And then ultimately, we're going for cell perfection. We want to get this cell into the right condition so that way it becomes the best that it can be. Because obviously, bad cells are actually our dead cells are cancer. So this then brings us to kind of like the next phase of this, which is really to understand why we created Phi Aqua. And so I'm going to transition into another scene really briefly so that way I can uh, put myself in a position to show you kind of what we're doing here. And uh, let's see here. OK, so big question here. Why, why are we designing FIACWA then? Like, what, what are we actually doing with this? And, and why did we even decide to create this? And for me, you know, yeah, I mean, people who know me know I've been on this constant quest to do the best that I can to assist humanity. And it's been quite a challenge, like seeing that when you do start figuring out a chunk of the truth, then there's a, somewhat of a resistance to the truth for many people. And then that's a process, and we call that process the healing. 
And I started noticing also that, you know, just language is anybody who's followed the work, we understand that language is pretty much a hang up to us getting somewhere at times because we've got to explain it in this very rudimentary language. So to me, working with water actually gives me another way to really assist everyone without having to get caught up on my words and, you know, living in a paradox where yes is really no sometimes, et cetera. So that's the chief reason of why I began to design Fiaqua was just to look for another mode of how to assist people. And then next what, um, what happened was is I also wanted to kind of turn the tides on this whole situation of what I feel like is somewhat of an imbalance in the reality by just balancing it out a little bit, especially in relation to this technology, and showing that actually technology is, has some very great applications. Now, if we use it to just drive cars for us or make machines that puts parts in places and all that, then obviously it's not going to have as much benefit for us. But if we begin to really look deep into it and realize that there is actually a real connection with everything, that the waves, frequencies, energies, et cetera, are all tied into the same thing. So what this means is, is this means that we are taking technology and we're utilizing it to help our system, our body, our consciousness, our culture, et cetera. And that's what FIAQUA is really about. And that's the root of, of how it's been developed. And also, for many of you have heard me say about the, in the first interview about kind of turning the tides on this kind of what I see is counterproductive business cycle that's happening in the world today where you have all these companies that, you know, basically they don't, they don't share the love. So, they, you know, they're making all this money and there's like one or two or three guys and then everyone else is like chained down to their desk and then late for every single thing that they have going on beyond work and then, you know, stressed out so much that they can't even really get with their kids and get with their wife. They lose their relationships all the way around. And that's just the cycle that I see happening on Earth. So I was just saying to put brakes on that. One of the major things that we can actually do is start fixing the financial situation to where going to work or ha your job, et cetera, those kind of titles are, are really taken away. And then what's put in place is that you're going to have fun. That when you go somewhere with what we have and what we're, what we're designing, like this is the first product, but we have things that are already rolling out, which I'll talk to you in a little bit about in, in relation to prototyping and what position that puts you in as far as your ideas. But the thing is, is that just to understand now that we're developing this product to begin to change many things on different levels. You don't have to just have one thing that only serves one purpose. So this is also solving a financial purpose for many people because when we introduce this product into the market, we're giving other people the opportunity to affiliate with this product and to receive very strong commissions. So I thought that that was a big plus. And the other thing was is that actually the, the device that I designed before FIACO, where a lot of the technology that I used in that and experimented with and, and, um, and found out in creation of that was put into this device, and that was for a reason. And this device I'm talking about is actually my chakra suits. And I finished chakra suits, and it's actually, they're, they're ready to go, but we decided that to roll out chakra suits first wouldn't really like give us the, the steam and the power that we're looking for, because let's face it, most people, or quite a few people, don't even know what chakras really can do. Not so much as what they are. Chakras have now become a word that you know, people are starting to throw around, but what are they, you know, how they really design, all that kind of stuff, they may be still a little bit hazy on. So I felt like to introduce a chakra suit, while that would be super cool, and then everyone would get a chance to charge up their own body with their own energy, launching something like that right away may not be the soundest financial move and business move. So Fiaqua was already a conception at that point, but the main thing that made it click is that everyone drinks water. So when you're talking about water, you do have to introduce, as you'll see throughout this process as, of what we've done and what we'll continue to share, you have to uh, produce the hard science, as they call it, behind how this works. And we've talked, to, we've talked a little bit of today about what that is. Uh, but at least it's about something that has to do with things that we all consume. So if I tell a person, you know, basically drink and grow rich, that's really what we're talking about here. We have something that can fire the energetic potential and exact frequencies of what you're looking for into this vessel and then you consume it and now it's moving in your body and now it's going to start a process of mimicry and resonance and then that's going to begin to change the overall vehicle. So this medicine in itself, you know, if you want to use that term, is, um, is internal. So it, it works with you on the deepest level. So the next thing uh, that actually we're going to get into, we're going to take a brief break here, and, and, and also I did want to add to what I was saying, that this is like also a brand new way for a person to move into first entrepreneurship, like 
seeing what it's like to be out there on your own, really representing something and sustaining yourself and the benefits of that, learning the ropes. Also, sovereignty, that ultimate goal that you keep in front of you when you, you know, you're even asking yourself, you know, why am I still on the planet doing blah, blah, whoa, whoa, stop. Let's go into sovereignty. This is our way in getting there. And also something that is going to open doors that may have not been open thus far, meaning that when you start talking about water, since everyone drinks it, you start talking about programming water, as you've seen in some of these videos, they get deep into, there's a lot of articles, you know, there, there was even, a, they've been programming water uh, at Technicolor, right? And they got huge scientific articles about how they're programming the water within the DNA, storing movies within the DNA. And it really starts to really hint to kind of more of what's going on in the reality that the DNA is basically holding all the memories, holding all the traits, and also functions as an antenna. And so this is the um, spirit tech, because I like to call it spiritual technology. This is the spirit tech that we're bringing into the world and we're really doing this. We're more than equipped to make it happen. And we're about to launch one of the most amazing products that I've really seen out there. And I think it's coming at a time where when just virtual reality goggles, something that you wear on your head that burns out your whole frontal lobe and Facebook and all those things are, you know, we've enjoyed it, I guess. And now it's starting to get like, okay, so what are we going to do next? And that's just for the people that, you know, are tuning into those things. And then likewise, we have another medium because I think everyone here is working to do something for someone, whether it's their family members, whether it's the entire world, their nation, whatever. So now this gives another medium in which makes that possible. And I think that it's stronger because when we have to use language, let's say Indians don't speak the language we speak, Chinese people don't speak the language that we speak if we don't, if we only speak English. But water, you can give that to someone and they speak that language. So we're gonna take a brief break and then when we come forward, we're gonna talk about prototyping and again, this is equally as important part, so I would probably suggest anyone who wants to take a brief break, you know, go get a drink or something like that, and then, you know, we'll come forward and then we'll talk a little bit about prototyping and what, how we create this device, you know, some of the things that we experience along the way and some pointers if you're looking to invent or create something that you should uh, be, be aware of, you know, in your process, wholeness.